My name is Fred Cook, and I drive school bus. My name is Leanne Murchie, and I'm a school bus driver for TCAPS. It's been a very wonderful experience. When I first hired in, one of the previous bus drivers told me that this particular job, driving school bus, is the best job on earth. So I immediately took to it, uh, and uh, I have to agree that this is one of the best jobs that anyone can do. What prompted me in the very beginning, I have a college degree, and she said, you're in the safest vehicle in the world, on the road. So I thought, well, you know, I'm going to try. It's Because I would be on the same time schedule as my own children. And when they were off, I was off. When holidays, I was, you know, I was there. So it was the best of both worlds. TCAPS offers jobs with elsewhere within the, the system. Between routes, I used to, for 12, 13 years, I did lunch duty over at East Middle School, and now I paint. They're real good about finding people the hours that they need during the course of the day to make the job great. We have Mesa Insurance. The whole district has it. It's awesome. It's the best health insurance. We offer a 401k. There's a sign-on bonus. It's a win-win situation. The most important thing, I think, coming to work at TCAPS is you understand it is it, you understand that you are a part of a team. It's a part of a I'll call this meeting you know, the Board Finance and Operations Committee to order. The committee would like to welcome the audience. Viewers may watch board committee meetings live on TV 190 or online at TCAPSnet uh, backslash board. Recorded may meetings may be viewed on demand at the same address. And uh, Happy New Year, everybody. It's good to see everyone here in one piece and healthy and welcome audience. So um, we're gonna go right into public comment. Um, this comment has set us, or the committee has set aside time for public comment. If you wish to make public comment, please fill out the public comment card and present it to the committee's recording secretary. Yeah, you don't have to read the rest. You can just ask Julie if we have any. We Megan have public here. comment, Megan. 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 Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Um, so if we don't have it, that's the end of public comments and we'll move right into procedural items. Um, we are at the approval, or we're going to do the draft committee min, uh, meeting minutes from November 1st, 2023. We're at the approval of the draft committee meeting minutes from the prior meeting. Are there any changes to the prior meeting minutes? No changes by me. And no changes. I reviewed them before this, so it looked good to me. All right, hearing no changes, uh, the minutes will remain as presented and we'll move to the next item. All right, I'm going to, moving on to board organizational meeting and finance related items, I'm going to defer to Christine Thomas-Hill. Yes, so um, as part of the board's organizational meeting, I'm bringing forward to you um, a list of all of our banking institutions and the identified personnel who are signatories on those um, accounts. Uh, so it's spelled out by position here. Um, it's one of our required items. Just to approve who are, who yeah. is, a, yeah, who's every organizational meeting every year, we just approve who does what. Yep. Okay. Got we it. list our current financial institutions, although we can change them throughout the year. This is the list that we have as of now. Do any questions or discussions about that? All right. So hearing no objections, um, the committee will move this item to full board. Yep. All right. And I, I don't know if it's a different item. The resolution of the property tax, I think it's all on one item. Yep, go ahead. Um, so this one uh, looks a little bit weird, but procedurally, this is how we've been handling it. It's actually approval of the 2025 summer property tax collection. We have to notify the city and the townships by January 1. So because the board's organizational meeting is after January 1, we do it a year in advance. Um, so we're asking for approval of the uh, collection for 2025 summer property tax, and we will notify the appropriate clerks. Got it. And this is added to the full board too? Yep. Is that right? Just an approval? Okay. Yep. Any questions? Can I calendar? Yep. yep. Any more discussion? 
All right, so hearing no objections, no further discussion, the committee will move this item to the full board as well. So moving on to bid services and or purchases, um, number one is technology with classroom audiovisual research and development pilot. So I'm gonna to defer to Evan Obranovic. If I said that right? Yes, okay. thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, happy new year, everyone. Um, so this first project uh, that we're bringing to you is, is in my opinion, I think pretty exciting. So we've been working with uh, a collection of classroom teachers as well as some of my staff uh, administrators on kind of reviewing what our classroom setups look like district-wide. Um, we have some that are in pretty desperate need of updating uh, and we wanna keep that consistent across the district. So uh, we've been working with a ed tech consulting firm called Communications by Design uh, and we put out basically an application uh, district-wide for teachers to apply if they'd be interested in kind of being the test pilots, the guinea pigs of putting in some new equipment. Uh, to give us their opinions on kind of find that magic blend of everything that's going to work that then we also as technology can best support and, and moving forward and look at you know hopefully um, in the next year or so putting together a, a big package to replace everything across the district um, on some sort of reasonable schedule to get it updated and and ready to go um, and so we're at this point, we've been doing a lot of review with those and meetings with that team of teachers. There's seven currently across the district um, that are that are gonna be participating. And so this is to purchase the equipment that will be going into their classrooms for the remainder of this year. And then, it'll, I mean, it's not gonna get pulled out right away. So they'll have some time next year as well to kind of continue to evaluate. And that'll give us time to move things around as well and let some of the other um, pilot teachers test out different equipment that we have. Uh, the main focuses of it are going to be the visual so some kind of visual display whether it's projectors like you see behind you displays like are on the wall over there um, an updated sound system that includes the voice lift which we have pretty consistently across the elementaries but we need to what we found is those students get very used to that and the teachers and then when they move up to the secondary that's not something that's was a standard and so we want to make that a standard place that they all have that ability to do that voice lift so the students can easily hear the teachers from wherever they are in the room and connect to the the visual piece um, and then a lot of times especially at the elementary level an updated version of the document camera um, which is obviously far replacing say the old school technology of the overhead projector which no one need, needs to know about anymore but we have a couple of different ones in place and there's a lot more advancements that we'd like to take a look at for what's going to best meet the needs of them um, and then we're also excited we're going to look at some opportunities to do some Chromebook management software for the teachers so they're able to kind of see what their class is doing in real time uh, evaluate that and then you know direct them in certain ways to give them the right links to go to really quickly um, pull up student work on the board and so there's a couple different options that we're evaluating to pull into that as well um, so with those pieces this installation like I said is a variety of those different components in all seven of the classrooms and we're just really excited I know the teachers are really excited to kind of get on that and really start putting it through its paces and figuring out what works what doesn't so that we can bring back to the board kind of our recommendation for what that updated package would look like um, and it might be different between elementary and secondary, but uh, I think regardless, we're gonna see you know, a really good standard and updating that we can then continue on our typical from technology perspective cycle of keeping it updated, keeping it replaced and, and current. When was the last time we updated that? It really only happens by building updates. So, I mean, new Montessori has kind of some of the newer equipment that we have. They all have short throw projectors. Um, but I would say the even the advancements in that voice lift sound system came a long way from when we bid out Montessori to when it was even installed. So hmm. looking at kind of what that is going to be like and what again is is best to sustain uh, for a reasonable price. And so between Montessori and then you have probably Eastern as the the next kind of most modern. Um, but then it kind of falls off down the district, and we've patchworked it of course and you know updated projectors as we've needed to and they they live out their useful life but we're really excited to hopefully have something like I said that kind of goes across the district is a standard no matter if you're on the west side of town or east side of town and then we all have the right parts and pieces say from a technology perspective to kind of easily repair update or, or maneuver that so did um did the I don't know if it's a consulting firm or this firm that came in was it is it their suggestions as to what they think 
we need, or is it more teachers saying uh, we're just really lacking here, or kind of a mixture of all of that? Yeah, no, it was, um, we brought them in to really just help facilitate, but the teachers kind of made those decisions and, and voiced their opinions on what kind of equipment they were interested in. And then communications by design kind of would go out and find those pieces and then bring it back and be like, is this what you're talking about? This is what we're looking at. This, I think, is going to achieve what you're asking for. Um, a good example is just wireless projection. And so looking at which ones are built in, certain projectors and TVs have a wireless capability built in to cast. But then they would also go find different kind of remote switchers that you could plug into. And so they kind of laid it all out on the table for the teachers and really let them pick. So. Uh, the teachers really got to say, okay, I would like this. They got their menu. I would like to try this, and I'd like to try this. And so then we kind of had those conversations about, we'd love to put all this in for you, and then we want that honest opinion about, I, I wanted this, but this is not working for me anymore. Or I, I wanted this, and then maybe more people should try it so we can kind of share that out. But it was all kind of driven by those teachers and what they wanted to see based on kind of those pillars I said, like, we want to do the audio, we want to do the visual, and then looking at kind of the, the extra component of, say, like that management. What are those pieces that we want to improve here? Would, so when I think of like our math leaders or our science leaders, would you say the seven teachers that are doing this are kind of our like IT, they're um, like more interested in it, more tech savvy, so? I think we have a pretty good mix. So okay. we, we talked about that and in, in who we encouraged to apply. We had a lot of applicants, it, it was hard to, to whittle down. Um, there's certainly some high flyers in there, those teachers who are super motivated. But we also have a couple of them who are just like, I, I don't know. I yeah. they, that was kind of fun to have that conversation with the other group and the consultants because they were just like, I don't really know what I want or don't want. And so then we started to explore, what does this even mean? What does this look like? The difference between having a panel in your room versus having a projector. And so I think we're going to get a pretty good kind of range of opinion. And then that user case of like, this person probably is not very tech savvy and they love this. So that's mm -hmm. gonna be super helpful for us too in making some decisions there. Um, and then they'll be able to share those experiences with if their classrooms in a certain building, obviously the other teachers will be able to come in there and kind of experience it and play around with it. And like I said, we're trying to make it as flexible as possible to then those pieces that aren't too hardwired into the room to be able to move around so that other places can try it out as well. Got it. And the, the seven teachers are all throughout the district, so everything from elementary to secondary to... Oh, yeah, we oh. have a range. We, you know, we would have loved to do, right, a different grade level in every building to really get that, but cost-effective-wise wasn't really going to be there. So, yeah, but we have all the way from our lowest is second grade. Kindergarten. Oh, no. Yeah, from we have a kindergarten, kindergarten teacher. Through high and school, through including high school. special education. Yep. Good. Okay. So, yeah, we really reached out and then even did a, a, a selective ask. Like we said, when we were looking for somebody in that special education realm to be like, you know, would you be willing to do this? Because I think what your students in that classroom needs is going to be different. Mm -hmm. I mean, we want to kind of get that opinion on what's going to best meet all those, so. Mm -hmm. Got it. And I have one more question. What is? What do you mean by voice lift? Voice lift just means <laughs> like a microphone. <laughs> what it, oh, Just okay. like a microphone. So yeah. like, and most, like I said, most of the elementaries have those. They have the little kind of pendant speakers that they yeah. hang around their neck and they can speak and it comes through okay. in addition to any sound you're putting through. And so, well, like I said, we've just seen that we want it more consistent and there's been a lot of advancements and kind of what else that can plug into, kind of adding to the PA system, the, the public announcement system, the schools and stuff. And so um, most teachers are really excited about that because we need to standardize that a little bit better. But yeah, that's what the voice lift means. I figured, I figured the <laughs> yeah. this, it was pretty self-explanatory, yeah. but I just wanted to make nope. sure I got it. So, okay, perfect. Oh, very good. Well, that's that's exciting. I think, yeah, we're really excited you know, about this. We're, we're past the Jetsons now, and we're getting into like, <laughs> <laughs> like really good interactive. And I think about, I mean, I'm older, so I think about the uh, our teachers losing their voices, like literally mm -hmm. losing their voices in third grade classes. Or the overhead projectors that you said we won't talk yeah. about. I mean, that's that's how I, I learned when I was student those. teaching. So, yeah, that's what I learned how to do thingies, writing on the yeah. Burning, all of that blowing up bulbs yeah in there getting really hot oh so you're right oh my we're gosh. thankfully a long long uh -huh. way from that <laughs> yeah <laughs> to, like wipe wipe down the sheets right i had yeah. teachers that like there's burned oh, you yeah. know like yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a bit pretty funny <laughs> well good thank you so much yeah do we have any other questions or any more discussion no okay great. Thank you. Great. so hearing no objections the committee will move this item to full board and then we'll talk about the Glenn Loomis upgrades. Do you and want again. that on consent or do you want that on discussion? I think consent. Consent? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, 
I think if, yeah, if we can give an overview. You'll be able to report it out. You'll report out on the committee and the committee yeah. reports. So. Yeah, that's good. That's mm -hmm. good for that consent. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to defer to you again, Evan, on the uh, Glenn Loomis upgrades. Yeah, so this one's needed, maybe not as exciting as the, the teacher pilot stuff, but yeah. um, in looking at uh, this building here, moving over to Glen Loomis um, and what their needs are, but also just more importantly, what that building on its natural cycle, if it needed students, was going to need. So, so that's what a lot of these upgrades obviously entail. The biggest one being the network infrastructure. So that's replacing a lot of the switching in, in the closets, which... We do have that on a cycle. Glen Loomis was actually up for. We had delayed it because it had gotten vacated um, in terms of putting in that newest switching gear. Um, so we're going to do that so that it's ready to go and then it would be ready for as long as administration needs to be there as well as any other future student placement needs. It would be set for the duration of that time. Um, the cabling part just to get everything set and wired up. Um, the boardroom updates are one that is an opportunity because it's something we have been looking at doing here for this boardroom as well. Um, it was in need of kind of some updating in terms of some of the outdated technology with the microphones we're currently using, all being hardwired and looking at some different opportunities for ease of operation um, in terms of being able to easily record and live stream and get that. So we're looking at taking advantage of this move to put some of those pieces in place. And it's gonna be a mix of using what we already have existing and bringing some of that equipment over but then looking at some really cool um, technology in terms of like sealing uh, microphones that will pick up everyone's voice without the need to be kind of constantly looking forward. We need to always there. pick up everyone's voice. Some right. of us are a little more outspoken. We can do others. that in the camera system, can focus in, um, and then being able to be easily controlled from something as easy as an iPad to be able to touch things, start recording, to pick the different spots where the camera's gonna go. Um, and so that's that cost there that you see is that variety of equipment there for just over eleven thousand dollars. <throat> Sorry, sorry for canceling the microphone. Just so that, yeah. Sometimes just for pops and pops yeah. <laughs> can come into the microphone. We can, and, you we know. can probably oh. pick it to not hit that side of the room whenever you want. Really we can time it. Yeah. A mute button. It goes back and forth. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Um, but yeah, so again, there's there were some really exciting things we saw. Like I said, of some automation of, of again picking up people and then the cameras being able to pan and pick up those without it's pretty manual back there with our all-star Larry kind of controlling everything mm -hmm. and he's doing it with like I said a lot of old outdated equipment that we've needed to update so that's what this is looking for there and all of that in, a, in another beneficial way is totally movable and mobile so we'll have it installed there but it'll be ready for the next setup whatever that looks like in the next iteration and then importantly looking at kind of that secure entrance and just getting that updated to what our standard is um, to a certain extent so again it's ready for <coughs> this group to move in, but then a very minimal need to do any additional if we have to relocate students to that space as well down the road. And did you say All-Star Larry? All-Star Larry, Larry <laughs> Burden. Yeah, yeah. I didn't He's know that was his nickname. Recording. Oh, I know who he is, yeah. but I didn't know that was his nickname. So oh, that's, thank you so much. For yeah, that. yeah. He's definitely an All-Star. <laughs> I do know he's everywhere all at once, and I see him everywhere. So. And he has great editing skills, Eric. So he can cut. Like, anytime I've done a good podcast job. with him, he's really good at making me sound extremely smart, <laughs> no matter what I say. So that's, that's perfect. Good to know. Good yeah. to know. I didn't know that there were options. There were um, cool. So all of these together add up to that total that you see down there for the 52500 um, individually as parts and pieces they're not really that excessive but we just started looking at all the costs that we would be doing to put this together and wanted to bring that to you guys to give you some idea of what we're trying to invest in that building to get it done um, so it's functional um, ready to go Great. And, um, before you move on I just want to take the opportunity to let you guys know this is probably the only item for the Glen Lumis move that would be brought forward to the board because it's the only one that would be required to based on the cost um, some of the other work we're doing, we're building a few small offices, but all of that is under the uh, bid threshold. And then we have some services that, um, like the moving company and things like that, that aren't required to take to the board. So this is likely the only one you'll see coming forward for Glen Lumis. Okay. And, and, and but as of right now, the budget is still good for the Glen Lumis portion of the move. And then we have saving on later, just to give you some more information on. Okay. And a lot of what we're doing, there's a reason it's not a lot, is we're doing really what we have to we're putting some walls that can be taken down drywall so that if there need to be converted back to classrooms which we hope to have happen 
that we're able to do that. So there's nothing there that's permanent, that's able to be taken down. So we're, you know, we're, we're kind of roughing it for a while, to be honest with you, until we really see kind of where it lands for sure. And we're hoping, you know, to the point of having it back to classroom space for a while before we're finally there, which we'll have some more extensive probably renovations way down the road. And the boiler is on hold, right? Yeah, well, and we're going to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's right. correct. Yes. Okay, and I've been getting just some comments from community members with uh, just this, you know, selling this building, the moving of admin, and then to Glen Loomis. Is that the, and I don't, we don't have to really say it right here, right now, but is that the, ultimately, is the plan then to move back to central grade school with administration, or you don't know, you, we don't really know that yet? No, I mean, you know, we would see, I mean, you know, it, based on what the board has put, you know, in the package for the pre-bond right now. Mm -hmm. The idea that, you know, we're, we're sitting on is that we will temporarily move to Glen Lewis and that if the bond were to pass with a renovation of central grade, we would need to move all the kids that, from central grade, you know, into Glen Lewis. We would then move to Sabin temporarily. And then from there, the kids move back to a renovated central grade. And then our thoughts right now are to move back into Glen Lewis. Five years down the road, could things change? Could, but you know that's the ultimate thought. But that's why we're not doing, like I said, all the upgrades and things that Evan talked a lot about are things that are going to be needed for that to be student occupied for a renovation of Central Grade. Other than the few temporary walls we're putting up, very minor from that standpoint. But that's that's the outlook of it as we sit right now. Okay, and I thought, yeah, I because when you think about the number of kids at Central Grade and moving and. Well, and we would have to think, I mean, there's probably the, some of the preschool tag we might have to rethink, you know, in a temporary spot, you know, with that because Glen Lomas wouldn't fit the full footprint of kids that are there now. Mm -hmm. You know, could we probably all of it except for some of those special programs? We think it'd be tight, but we could. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, again, I'm not putting the cart before the horse. We've oh. got a bond to figure out here and then yeah. we'll, we'll go from there. And then in the meantime, we're going to be over there in some relatively temporary digs and We'll make do until we really figure out exactly where we land from a bond. Okay. This has actually been part of the discussion for, you know what, four months, six yeah. months? For me, it's been years, but yeah. Yeah, for you, it's been years. <laughs> <laughs> it's been pretty, pretty active. So yeah, yeah we've, got, we've gotten down yeah. just like, what kind of panels are you using right. for those wall dividers? It's, right, it's exactly. Been Cheap. Yep. Mm -hmm. So fantastic. Do we, do you have any more questions? Mm -hmm. No. Any more discussion? Okay, are we ready to um, move that item to the full board? Yes. Yep. Consent. Consent. Yep. Hearing no objections, we'll move it. Thank you. Um, informational items, and we're going to go to capital projects next, and I'm going to defer to Christine Thomas. -Hill. Yes, so um, we're going to start with uh, a presentation of capital projects update and pictures, and then as part of the presentation, we also have some pictures of what's going out to bid for the Sabin renovations, so you can see um, how we're asking for the renovation to be done, and a couple of alternates that we're asking for pricing for, so we can make some decisions. And then I do uh, want to review the Central High and West Senior High Innovation and Manufacturing Centers. Um, I know you didn't have an opportunity to look at that, but I had Megan send it to you so that we could I take a look at it and have a conversation. So I'll let Paul uh, talk about some of the ongoing projects and their updates. So it's been a minute. <laughs> Seems like it's been a couple of months since we've had here. So this is the uh, clinic at West Middle School. Mm -hmm. It is opening and open and operating. Uh, I was in there uh, yesterday morning. They were staffed and ready to go okay, for students. And then out at uh, transportation, the bus wash, um, this is really coming around together really well. And right now we're waiting for the delivery of the bus wash equipment. Okay. So that can be installed. That's coming about January uh, 22nd. And that, they start putting that equipment in. But all the heating systems, all the other ancillary systems for the space are going in. Will you, will you remind me, is that equipment, it's not an auto, it's like people are hand washing, correct? No, or it's it automatic. Okay. Oh, it's an auto system. That would be really fun, <laughs> actually, if you think about an automatic car wash, but an automatic bus wash, what does that look like? Just bigger. It's just yeah, bigger. It's, <laughs> maybe you'll get to ride on that. You can, hey. like, <laughs> this wash will allow us to wash all of our uh, TCAPs, trade fleet, the, I, I mean, all of Everything. the vehicles. Everything. So all the vehicles. It'll, uh, it'll wash any size vehicle. 
That's Maybe we should ridiculous. put the board on a bus and run them through the bus <laughs> bus. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It'd be fun, right? Yeah. So anyway, it's 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 really come together out there. So uh, the central this is Central High. Uh, they were out there laying blankets down yesterday, getting ready for uh, winter conditions, keep the soil from freezing, wow. stuff like that. Um, there's it, it hasn't appeared. There's been a lot going on. It's been the holidays, Christmas, you know. And that, but there's a lot going on in the background. There's a lot of permit work and a lot of um, uh, shop drawing submittals and, and other things going on, plus the work towards um, getting the bids in for the uh, phase two piece of this. And this is uh, West Senior High, the site. There's a little better picture of where that's at at West Senior High, taken a little while ago. And that. So. And they've, complete, yeah. <laughs> they've completed some of the utility work, correct? Not yet. Okay. That, that we were waiting on some of the permitting to come in, and, we're, and they're starting digging actually today okay. to move the water line oh, okay. out at West Senior High. They're the bulldozer or digger mm -hmm. in the front there this morning. That's so. what they're doing. Yeah. They're, we have to relocate the water line there. And then just some shots we took um, at uh, the athletic complex. Um, we got out there at night. Yeah, that's a great picture. Took a couple of night shots oh, yeah. with a drone. That's great. Daytime. That's what it looked like when before the snow snow flew. It could have just been a couple of days ago. I know. I mean, <laughs> could have been. Let's be real. Yeah. We got out there a little while ago and took these. And then Sabin. Um, these are the plans uh, for relocating the, the print shop out there. Um, that's going out to bid end of this week, first of next week, and that. Um, I'm not f sure how familiar you are with, with Saban. Um, they would know where the gym is. They've walked out there. We kind of yeah. went through this some of this the, before. But this is the training center the area where this the main entrance right mm -hmm. now. It's a construction term. term. Yeah. 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 So okay. Okay. And then the other alternate is some office space. Now, some of the, um, uh, I thought if I understood this right, half of Saban had been through the uh, asbestos abatement and then there was still half of the building that needed. Is that what's the gym in fact, or no? We're going to start yeah. as, as abatement is going to start uh, this month. Okay. Now, how about but the classrooms that are on the other side of that? We're not going to yeah. Okay. So on this side right here, correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, but up here is the hallway of the whole classroom. Yeah. So we're not touching. Okay. That would be a later project. That would be in the next month. Okay. That, that hallway that's in between those two has been abated. It's just the hallway, the but, not the, hallway, but, but not, not the classroom. But not the classroom. Got it. Okay. Is that, like, on this one, is that round structure with that? Is that? Yeah, that's, that's the classroom. The old, the old classrooms yeah. there. Yeah, those, there's, n there's no abatement in that area. Okay. It's just those old straight line classrooms. When you say there's no abatement that we're not doing, or there won't be some in the future still need to? Oh really? In that whole rotunda area, yep. all that. That was built after a certain date. Agree what date it was. 1972. Built. But it won't be a part Maybe of the renovation. Right? Mm -hmm. Got yes, it. Yes, there's floor tile pavement in that old gym area. We do see that in a future thing. So you know, just you know, obviously, if we were to go over there for central office, we would need it. You know, to point. But mm -hmm. even after that, if we do in fact end up at Glen Lewis, we do see a lot of need. We rent space out already, for instance, in the end of the Michigan State Police there. Um, so we do see some opportunity for some even revenue generation, some things like that. You know, and, and you know, quite frankly, you just don't want a part of the building to deteriorate when you're putting this much into. You already have a beautiful data center that's there. Mm -hmm. You're now going to have the print shop there, the, you know, the, the, the classroom, the, the training classroom that's there. 
So that is in our overall thoughts, but it's just not at all in this phase mm -hmm. to touch that, that those parts. So if, if, and when we have to move, possibly, you know, during these transition times, would it be moving into those areas? If, okay, okay the bond. Right. Willing, at that point, need the bond. that would be something that would be on that to get done, and then right. when that's done, we'd move, central grade move, you know, it's all kind of a domino effect from that standpoint. From a functionality perspective, isn't the print shop in that saving a better, oh. much oh. better? And, and the I thing mean, we love is that it brings all of our technology printing all together finally under one roof. Yeah. Because Evan, Evan supervises that, so he's, you know, in two different places all the time. That you know, how awesome that's going to be to have all of our people that do that work. And as printing continues to upgrade right. technology and all that, to put all that under one roof, we think is just going to be awesome. And not carrying paper up and downstairs, right. you know, all that element. It's, yeah. it's a huge. And to have kind of that awning, like you talked about, weather protected for truck. Yeah, um, trucks can come yep. back there. And You'll yeah. be able to bring paper in on yeah. pallets and just leave it on the pallets and not, not have to unload it, it and bring it down the elevator. Yeah. Almost daily do we get a truck a, a truck with paper in here that they're carrying those down wow. and putting on the elevator little by little. And the print shop has been in this building forever? Since we started it, wow. Hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, so, and that's it because we already went over the innovation and manufacturing, correct? Nope. Um, that I have. So, um, I had a 16 page document that I just shared with you that I'm assuming this will go on discussion for the board because it's $8 million and usually for that high of a dollar amount it's on discussion but I thought I would just review with you some of the details um, just so you have knowledge of that going into the board meeting um, if I got the right packet. And, and, and again for the record this is seriously fresh off the press right. I mean they've been working you know even through the holidays and that element so you know no one it just getting here to this point sent out we sent it as soon as we had it in our hands this, this that order. morning but um, you know that's the purpose. We just, from a time standpoint, we want to get everything we can as quick as we can here. So that's why we're bringing it now. So um, for the memo itself, uh, what Paul and I tried to do is just give a high-level overview of what we're asking you to approve right now, mm -hmm. knowing that you already approved bid pack one, which was a little over eight hundred thousand. So what we're bringing forward right now is the rest of the construction package. So we're asking for $8,892,810. That does include a 10% contingency. But I also just want to make you aware that there's other items that have yet to be brought forward to the board. So we have furniture, fixtures, and equipment that has a budget of 500,000. We have technology equipment that has a budget of about 600,000. And then we are not recommending right now purchasing the dust collection system. Um, we're gonna look at purchasing that a little bit later. Uh, due to the high cost that we got on a bid. So that's approximately 400,000. So overall, I anticipate this project costing 12.1 million. Mm -hmm. Which is over kind of what we, we initially... Which is why we're not doing the Glen Lewis boiler. Right, okay. So this is a very critical component of the bond that was done and mm -hmm. promised. And so, you know, again, for that record of 12,100,000 is what we have in that budget right now. 10 million is what we had in the budget. So to be clear, people have wondered, are we spending the 10, 10 million? At this point, we're well over the 10, you know, the 10 million, but we wanna make sure the project's done right. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that's what the team has put together with us. Just a couple questions on the, um, so the first bid that came in for the 800, mm -hmm. right? Um, that was explained to me again why there was the bid one and that now the bid two the bid one and that i when i got the email today it was yeah sort of we were just trying to get a jump start on footings and foundation so yeah. um we wanted to get a start there so we could get this started before the ground actually froze okay get some footings and foundations in that's why they're putting blankets out on the sites right now just to keep the footings or the ground from freezing got it and that so we can get that stuff in okay and i i mean i remember i just want to make sure that that's yeah. Known. And then the bid two is to finish out the project. Um, yep, there's 13 bid categories all the way from concrete, masonry, mm -hmm. uh, electrical, mechanical, everything else to complete the project. Okay. Other than, like I said, the furniture that'll come later. Yeah. 
And do you think just increase in construction costs is why it's over kind of what we predicted? Yeah, and, and quite honest, I think in the design phase, when it touched bigger than probably was originally thought for sure, but we listened to the kids, we listened to the parents, we listened to our professionals in the area, and we felt with the way that the site fit and the buildings were and things that were wanted that this is what we wanted to put out. And so we're making some sacrifices in some other areas because we just felt like this was a critical component that our community has an expectation for. And so we're honoring that expectation. That's important knows that that you know I mean I think that was I remember the discussions and a lot of community members reached out so I think that that is important um, yeah so you might not have heat at a <laughs> the boiler at We're Glen Loomis is about two or three years <laughs> newer than, newer than one. the one in this okay. building <laughs> So well, yeah. we're, we're taking a gamble, and, and it is a little bit, right? Because you're going to have to have a new boiler in there for if we move that central grade group kids, right, especially. So we've decided to roll the dice a little bit with this, and there is always the ability to bring an emergency unit in if we needed to. Um, you know, I, to be clear, we, we're tapped out from bond funds of the, of the last bond sale at this point. We really won't have anything available again of the last bond until 2025, correct? Right, and that sale. has very limited... Yeah capacity just because of our annual allocations. Right. So this is really threading the last of pretty much the bond. Um, but again, this was such a critical component that we decided to go this route. And, you know, our, we have great people that will work on our boilers and, you know, keep them going. And we might have little space heaters at times. But again, we just felt like it was that important to bring this and do this right. That that's the decision that you know, Christy and I, you know, mutually, you know, came to to, to move forward. And the, and the boiler for the next would be, is included in our next, in this bond that we're proposing. The, it, yeah, we would have new availability bond, for bond. the new bond with yes. what we've done in pre-planning. We have lots of boilers across many buildings mm -hmm. in that, and that would be a component of that, that okay. as well. And hopefully we can get all of that energy savings mm -hmm. that we're talking about. Yeah, that's a huge to part too. Address. Yeah, those things. Yeah. Correct. Yep. So, you know, we hope to do a slew of, of boilers to, keep our kids safe, warm, and dry. So yep. that's a goal. Well, good. Then I would recommend we do move this to the full board for discussion, just because um, of the amount. Thank you. I agree with that. So any objections to moving that to the full board to dis for discussion? That's what we'll do. Uh, moving on to finance, and again, we'll defer to Christine Thomas-Hill. So just a brief overview of kind of where we're sitting right now. Um, because we've had so many conversations about the building sales and the expenses for the move, I, I just want to give you an overview. Our original adopted budget in June showed a surplus of $40,000. Um, we were fortunate to have an increase of 63 students from our projections, so there's a little bit extra revenue there. Um, now, as, as of right now, I'm planning to bring the budget amendment forward to the board in February. I don't plan to include the sale of the buildings because when I put that packet together, it's going to be all ready next week and the due diligence uh, for both entities isn't over. So I would rather wait and catch that revenue in the final amendment in June so you won't see that. But this just kind of gives you a picture. Um, if everything comes in as anticipated with the building sales and the expenses for both moves, Glen Loomis and Sabin, um, which I'm a little bit worried about Sabin, I think it's going to be a little bit higher than the million I projected. I think it's going to be closer to 1.5, but I just wanted to give you kind of an overview of how we might end the year, um, all things considered. Uh, but this is not going to be what you see next month when I bring forward the amendment because I'd rather not recognize that revenue until we know we have it. Fiscally responsive, <laughs> and I appreciate that. Shoot, I had a closing this morning, and I was waiting for the title company to fund and disperse, and I wouldn't even put a sold sign up until I was like, "Do you have the money?" <laughs> <laughs> because I was so nervous that you'd yeah. never know. Yeah. So we're not far off that. I know. I, I know. Well, I, I understand and appreciate. And due diligence is due diligence. Yeah. So I mean, I agree with that. Yeah. I believe the due diligence on this building is done January twenty fifth, and on board the bus about February twelfth. So by January 25th, our packet will already be ready. So we'll just catch it in the final amendment in June. 
Well, I appreciate all this because to me there's absolutely no surprises on anything that you've said in the past or brought forward today. It's very straightforward and it's the same information. So thank you. I yep. appreciate that from everybody. Mm -hmm. Makes it a little easier to understand, <laughs> but Good. Mm -hmm. um, also helps with the integrity of the process. So I appreciate that. Um, do we have any more discussion about that? Any questions? No. Okay. And moving on to other items, do we have any other items? Uh, I don't have anything specifically. Just a reminder in your packet is kind of an outlay of upcoming district purchases. There is a lot that's going to be coming in May and June. That is that is our heaviest purchase year, especially for the curriculum department. So um, we try to keep this uh, as updated as possible for items that we know are coming, uh, but just so that you have an overview of what's to come until the new school year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, anything further from anyone? Short and sweet. All right, thank you so much. We'll adjourn. And uh, our next meet, Board Finance and Operations Committee meeting is Wednesday, January 31st, 2024 at 4.30 p.m. here in Conference Room C. And that's pending your organizational meeting and the decisions you make on committees. So we just left it as is until we hear otherwise. Thank you.